Hi everyone, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna be doing part two on Beatitudes as we're going through the Beatitudes line by line. I welcome you back. And for those that do not know me, my name is Mary Beth Pacora, and my blog is mybelovedsvoice.com. You can always go back and catch up since this is only the second post for this series. Yesterday, we talked basically about what Beatitudes means. And the name Beatitude actually means supreme blessedness. So as we begin, let's start with a word of prayer as we are asking the Lord to show us the importance of living our life and living it right as we follow him. So Lord, I do thank you for that. I thank you that we can come together as one and we can learn of you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are ever before us, always teaching us and always uh, pulling us up to greater things in God. So, Father, it is my prayer that as we position ourselves at your feet to learn of you, that we would be able to live right before you not out of obligation, but because we love you so much. So that's my prayer. I, I pray for supreme blessedness for those that are watching. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So as we begin, we are gonna dive right into the verses today. And just to recap a little bit, yesterday we, we talked about um, what supreme blessedness is and how the Lord has desired that for us. And each of these beatitudes is really a standard for Christian living. And I wrote yesterday on how to live according to that standard, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to to live through us, really. We can't do this on our own. So today, as we begin, you'll notice if you look at the post online, I posted a picture that I found online that is a picture of where Jesus most likely shared the Sermon on the Mount. And it's a picture on the Sea of Galilee, off the Sea of Galilee, on a, on a gentle slope that is uh, before us. And I remember going there when we went to Israel, my husband and I, we, we saw this, this place from the Jesus boat that they call there, which, which is you're sailing on the Sea of Galilee, and it's absolutely beautiful. But what we found out about the place where he shared the Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes, we remember that when he shared that, there was, back in that time, there was no microphones. There was no, no uh, speaker system available at that time. So he chose a place that we are told that had natural acoustics that would amplify his voice as he spoke to the multitudes. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And remember yesterday we said that, that it was a Jewish custom for the rabbis to sit among his people and teach. That would be equivalent to a pastor here stepping up to the pulpit to speak. And I love that approach because Jesus is sitting among the people eyeball to eyeball. And it just shows up his love and rapport for the people as well. It's a good Jewish custom, I believe. And as I looked at the picture, I remembered being in Israel and remembered the place along the Sea of Galilee where Jesus gave this most powerful message. Before we start chapter 5, this is what it says at the end of chapter 4 on the 25th verse. It says, the time that Jesus delivered this message, large crowds 
from Galilee, the Decropolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. So as we see, Jesus already had a large following. He would have been off the charts in social media with thumbs up and big hearts. Oh, his algorithms would be good. <laughs> but the beauty of what I saw from that was that his recognition and popularity, it came from obedience to carrying out what God had called him to do. And so it is for us. And after I said that, it was like the Holy Spirit said, take note, people of God. If it's a God thing, our ministries are going to grow, especially if all that we do is done for an audience of one. All that we do, all that we say is for the audience of one. And that's what I love about the Holy Spirit is because we can be in a large setting. We can be in church. We can be at a conference and the speaker will say something, give a, 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 a specific verse or say something and Holy Spirit will just speak specifically for one person. And then another thing will be said and that the Holy Spirit will be ministering to that person with that specific thing. That just shows how relational and personal our God is. So in saying all that, let's just dive in to Matthew chapter 5, the first three verses. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we discovered yesterday that the rabbis did sit down, as I said. So it was not unusual for Jesus to sit. And when I looked up pictures online, it, it actually showed Jesus sitting like on a high, or on, like on a rock among the people. It was really a, a cute, a beautiful visual. It's on, it's on my blog as well. But as we, as we break this verse down... The word blessed in that context is referring to the ultimate well-being and spiritual joy of those who share in the salvation and kingdom of God. The ultimate well-being of those who share in the salvation of God. Spiritual joy is very distinct in Jesus' followers, and it's reserved and identified in spirit-filled believers of Yeshua, which is Jesus. There are times in my life that I feel complete joy, and I don't understand why when things all around me are going crazy, I just feel joy and peace within. Brothers and sisters, that only comes from the Spirit of God. That only comes from a well-being physically, emotionally, and spiritually that is inside of us. In the back of the book, of the Bible and the Revelation, it defines blessed as this. Those who read the words, not only read the words, but who hear the words and take it to heart that this is written. And I believe that's for all scripture, but specifically for the Beatitudes as well, since every line by line begins with the word blessed. God is saying, you will be blessed if. So blessed are the poor in spirit. What does poor in spirit mean? I know you're all dying to find out. <laughs> Before I define what it is, I'll define what it is not. 
It is not the spiritually proud or the self-sufficient ones. It is not. One commentary said this when I looked it up. It says, to be poor in spirit is to recognize your utter spiritual bankruptcy before God. It is understanding that we have absolutely nothing worth to offer God. Being poor in spirit is admitting that because of our sin, we are completely destitute spiritually and can do nothing to deliver ourselves from our dire situations. So my friends, when we recognize our need for God, what do we gain? The answer is in the rest of the verse. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a gift. We cannot earn our salvation by living a certain way. So no matter what our status is in life, we must recognize that our spiritual poverty, we have to recognize our spiritual po poverty before we come to God in faith to receive the salvation that he offers. And isn't salvation the foundation of this Christian walk? Yes, it is. If we do not recognize and confess our own spiritual poverty without him, we will never be able to hunger and thirst for him. And once we admit this poverty without him, then we can step into the riches of what he has promised for all believers, for all followers, really. Here's what it says about that. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed and worthy of praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, in Christ. Folks, we are blessed and beneficiaries of every spiritual blessing that belongs to and comes from the heavenly realms. Stop and think about that. You're a beneficiary of all that Jesus is. Hmm. So as I close this message, I want us to recognize this, that being spiritually poor and recognizing our need for him positions us to receive all that he has as our inheritance from him and from that heavenly realm. If that doesn't excite us, then we're in trouble. It was through his poverty that we became and we become abundantly rich. So Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the recognition of being made rich in heavenly things only because of your faithfulness. We can't earn it. But you have told us that blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for they shall receive the kingdom of heaven. Have a good night, my friends. Be blessed. And remember to check out the blog, mybelovedsvoice.com. Until we chat again. Bye-bye.